Hey guys, welcome to another video. Uh, this time around I'm going to install a real O2 sensor. We are installing an Innovate wideband gauge in the car. You saw the last video, we used this one. This is the narrowband one. But we have the bung welded in, so that's ready to go. We can just take this one out and put the Bosch 4-point line in. We redid most of the wiring in the last video. As you guys can see, we have the new wiring in here. Looks really nice. So I want to install the O2 sensor now because we are still running the tune that was on the car before we redid the engine and we now have a, a VTEC head and a different intake. So I just want to be sure everything is uh, what it should be. But yeah, wiring is still a bit of a mess, but everything is working. I just have to neaten it up. Uh, we have the radio out because I'm going to install the gauge over there because these two pods are used. Also, these gauges are hardwired, so I can't just unplug it and pull one out. I have to cut the wiring. So I'm just going to use a gauge pod. So bought this thing on AliExpress just because it was the cheapest shipping to me. Uh, you can get them on eBay, Amazon, whatever. It's just a normal 52 mil radio delete gauge pod. It was quite cheap, so I'll link that in the description. And then also we have this. This was not so cheap. Okay, so you get the white gauge phase and a silver bezel if you want to do that. I think the one on the gauge will be black and black. You do get the bung, you don't get this with the cheap ones. Uh, this is a data cable if you want to connect it to your PC. You can download some software with this thing. Okay, this is quite a nice long cable. 8 foot cable for use with the 4.9 sensor. This is the gauge. Okay, and here is the sensor itself. So, this is the 4.9 Bosch wideband. You even get a whole instruction manual and a sticker. Anyway, let's look at the gauge itself. Now basically, your options with these are normally the AEM or the Innovate. Uh, to be honest, the Innovate one. I could get a better deal on. Uh, not saying that I don't like the AEM one. You have four wires here. You have a ground wire. You have a signal wire. Then you have a 12 volt fused relay uh, power in. And then the white one is for your headlights. So if you connect this to your headlights and it sees 12 volts, what will happen is it will dim the gauge for you. If you don't want to use that, none of my other gauges are dimming. So I didn't see why I would connect this one to dim. So this one you just connect to ground as well. So you have two negatives, one positive. I mean, that's really easy. And then if you have an ECU that can read the O2 output, you can connect this straight to your ECU using this. You also have an in and an out. You'll probably use this with the data cable. I'm not gonna use that stuff now, I'm just gonna install this quickly. Basically, I wanna take the car to the drags today, with like within two hours from now. So I'm going to install this. Oh, that's really nice. Nice and clean design. The AEM one has much thicker red numbers in the middle, and I find the yellow thinner letters to be a bit easier to read, so that's why I went to this one. But it was also slightly cheaper, so that's probably the real reason why I went to this one. Now, we also have these plugs. Got these on, I think it was eBay. I think these are a copy of, of uh, Delphi plugs. Not really sure. They come with these pins, and you can crimp those pins onto the ends of these four wires. And then you push them into the plugs, and you have plugs. You don't have joins or connections or twist and tape or anything like that. Sad thing is you do need to buy this thing. Mine is a major tech. Okay, so now we are installing the clips onto this little fly lead they give you. I cut the leads a little bit shorter, and then we're going to crimp on these little connections now. This part grabbed onto the wire casing and that part crimped onto the wire itself. It is quite strong, you can't pull it out. So I'm gonna do four more and then take it from there. Because now I crimped these on, they're all on there nice and tight. You should put these little grommets on first if you want to use them. That's just to make the connection waterproof. This is going to be inside the car, so it doesn't really matter. But I'm going to put them on anyway. But you should slide them onto the wire before. You can actually put them over the pin itself, but it's a bit more difficult. 
so now I have to slide the stuff into these plugs and then they need to lock into the top of it so let's see how that goes Okay, so one is in, that's the white one, that's the one for the demo, so I'm going to use it as a ground, just because they recommend that in the manual, so I'll put it next to the black one. Okay, there we go. Now we have a, a plug on the end. Much neater than just twisting and taping these things or even soldering it. I don't know, I'm not good with soldering, so that's why I'm going this route. Now what I'm gonna do is, this is the other side of the plug. We're gonna use three pins, so we're gonna use two negatives and a positive from the relay. If anyone watched the other videos, you guys will know we had a relay board made. So there is a relay ready to be used for this. So I'm just going to run a positive wire from the relay to the plug and then a negative from the relay to the plug. And that board does actually have a negative connection as well that goes straight to the battery terminal. And that's what they recommend. Yeah, they do recommend you, you earth this sensor on the negative terminal because any interference or resistance in the negative will give you a different output on the sensor because this is a voltage based um, sensor. So good earths really important for this kind of sensor so this will earth to the relay board which is directly connected to the battery terminal so now what i'm going to do is just take some of this wire i'm going to measure how long i need on the one side we're going to put a pin like this and on the other side we are going to put a ring terminal so it can go on to the relay board Okay, so here's the three wires, they're going to the relay board. We have two negatives and a positive. These are way overkill in size, they're much thicker than these wires, but rather too thick than too thin. So what I'm gonna do is crimp these terminals on the other end. So the small one is a power one that goes to my relay board output. This will go to the earth connection on the relay board with its own independent wire to the negative on the battery. I'll basically crimp them together. So what I'll do is just put the terminal on them together like that. That goes to negative the red one is positive they get they all get three little pins that'll go into the plug plug into the sensor wiring done now i do have a fancy wire stripper you don't need it but trust me this thing is worth every cent and it's not really that expensive if you're ever working on wiring stuff i would 100 percent recommend you just invest in one of these things saves you so much time and you get much cleaner wiring at the end. Okay, so I'm going to install this onto here. Looks like you just loosen these. I say the quality of this gauge over the $20 one is noticeable. It is definitely noticeably much better. Okay, so the gauge is installed in the little mounting radio delete pod thing. This is definitely a much better than the $29 gauge we had that one had like a cap on the back that screws onto it much lower quality But anyway, I'm going to connect the wires now because we have to push this into the dash So I'm just going to plug all the wires into it and then feed them into the dash because doing it from the other side will be much more difficult Okay, so now all we have to do is push all of this wires into this hole and then, I don't know if you guys will see the light, but at the end there, it'll come out basically where these wires are coming out and then we'll be in the footwell where we have the relay board down there. And then the big plug will go into the engine bay 
and that's basically it that's all you need to install this wideband okay guys so everything is connected now once i key on the car it should turn on this gauge the sensor is not connected now so it should trigger an error and then that should trigger the calibration mode so let's see if it works once i key it on okay there we go gauge is on now you can see it has an error code e2 so that means the sensor is not connected so now i'm going to key it off and then we're going to be in calibration mode okay so what i did now is the sensor is just here that piece of wire is coming out under the battery tray here it is it's plugged into the sensor i took a little plastic cap off because you need to calibrate it now for that it needs to be in open air so i'm just going to lay it here and then this thing does have a heating element so I probably don't put it on something plastic but i'm gonna just lay it here and then turn the gauge on again and it should calibrate once it's calibrated we will take that one out put this one in and that should be it okay the sensor is now connected so now it should be in calibration mode let's see There we go, now it's calibrating. There we go, it's calibrated. So I'm going to key it off, install it in the exhaust pipe, and then connect everything up again. Just don't power up the gauge while the sensor is not connected, otherwise you'll trigger the calibration mode again. Okay, so everything is connected now. Let's see if the air fuel ratio is going to read once we start the car. That is rich, but it is a cold start, so the car is very cold, hasn't run in quite a while, so uh, it running a bit rich on startup is normal, I think, I'm not really an expert, but I do know the ECU does uh, richen up the air fuel ratio when the car is cold, but I mean, other than that, looks like the relay board works, looks like the sensor works, everything is installed correctly, so quite happy with that, what I'm going to do now is just drive it and test it, and I'll show you guys what it looks like. perfectly I'm trying to get it to a uh, not cruise at 10 air fuel ratio so it's looking okay it's doing 13 14s now a little bit of street tuning now and it is accurate as I'm moving the fuel map around it is changing on the gauge so we know the gauge is calibrated and working perfectly anyway guys thanks for watching please like comment subscribe I'll see you all in the next one